Hi, in this video, we're going to solve a particular problem which appeared in JE Advanced 2013. So first we understand the problem statement. Here we have a line L that passes through the origin and perpendicular to the lines L1 and L2 where the vector equation of the line L1 L2 are given. Now we need to find a point on the line L2 which lies at a distance root 17 from the point of intersection of L and L1. So basically we have to find first the equation of the line L, then we have to find the point of intersection of L and L1 and then we have to find a point lies on L2 which is at a distance root 17 by root 17. So that's the problem. Let's go ahead and solve this problem. Consider the equation of the straight line as given as L1 and L2. So these are actually the equation in the parametric form we can talk about. Let's go ahead. Now, first we consider that, right, that the general equation of a line passing through a vector A and parallel to a vector B, which is considered as R plus equal to A plus lambda B. So that's why we try to rewrite it as follows. So L1 is written as some vector plus T into some another vector and obviously the other equation L2 can be written as in the same form as a vector plus S into the other vector. How can we write that? Just take the term of T and S separately. Okay, that's it. Let's go ahead. Now as we said, we recall that equation, that equation of a line passing through a vector A and parallel to a vector B is A plus lambda B, where B is also the direction ratio of the straight line. That means that the direction of the straight line is along or parallel to the vector B. So therefore, we conclude that the L1 pass through a vector A, A1, 3i minus A and 4k and the direction ratio is B1 obviously the vector corresponding to t. Similarly, the L2 plane, L2 straight line has passed through the another vector A2 or a point A2, which position vector is 3i, 3j and 2k and it's having the direction ratio B2, which is 2i, 2j and k. Now let's go ahead and try to find out the equation of the line L. Let's go ahead. That the straight line L is perpendicular to the line L1 and L2. So therefore, the direction ratio of the line L is actually B1 cross B2. Why? We know that B1 cross B2 is a vector which is perpendicular to both B1 and B2. So that's why the direction ratio of the line L will be along B1 cross B2. Let's go ahead. So first, how we compute B1 cross B2? So this is a straightforward calculation. We have to calculate the determinant. And if we expand the determinant, right, we get it as minus 2i, 3j, and minus 2k. So therefore, the straight line L has a direction ratio, as we are seeing, minus 2, minus plus 3, and minus 2 with the component of ij. Now it's also given that the straight line L as passing through the origin and therefore the vector equation of L can be written as L is A plus lambda into the direction ratio. But here A that passing through the vector is origin. So it's 0i, 0j and 0k. So therefore A is simplified as lambda into that vector minus 2i plus 3j and minus 2k. Now we need to find out the point of intersection of L and L1. So that's why to find the point of intersection, we assume that, right, that they intersect. And therefore, for the point of intersection of L and L1, there will be some T and some S, some lambda exist, so that, that these two points are equal. Why so? Because we know that, right, that as the vector equation 
as the vector equation of L1 and L2 is already obtained. So these are the parametric or the position vector of any point lies on L1 and L. So if they intersect, obviously this position vector must match on the point of intersection. So that's the concept. So now let's, let's equate the left hand and right hand side based on the component i, j, k. So in the left hand side, let's rewrite the equation in the component wise. So therefore, the i component will be equal, j equal and k component will be equal. And that's why we get three equations that 3 plus t is minus 2 lambda, minus 1 plus 2 t is 3 lambda and 4 plus 2 t is minus 2 lambda. So this is the component of i, j, k. Let's equal, name it as equation number 1, 2 and 3 respectively. Note that from 1 and 3, the right hand side is equal to minus 2 lambda. So we can easily equate them. So from 1 and 3, equating 1 and 3, we can say that 3 plus t is equal to 4 plus 2t. So doing some basic arithmetic, it implies that t is equal to minus 1. If we substitute t equal to minus 1 in the equation number 2, we get is lambda is equal to minus 1. Now, as lambda is minus 1, so therefore, the point of intersection, if we assumed it as p, which will be equal to minus of, so we just substitute in the case of lambda, because it is easy to substitute, that's why we choose lambda values. So, p, the point of intersection or the position vector p, that cap, right, is equal to 2y minus 3j and 2k. So, this is the position vector of the point of intersection. Now, similarly, with the similar logic, we need to find out a point on the line, on the line L2, right, uh, such that it is a distance of root 17 from the point of intersection or the having the position vector P. So therefore, we can see that any point Q of L2, which is having the position vector Q, is equal to 3 plus 2 si, 3 plus 2 sj, and 2 plus sk. So basically, we rewrite the equation L2 in the form of uh, 3s plus 2, and we can directly write that because see that the given equation also given in that particular form itself. So now, as we are trying to find out the distance, right, so therefore we compute the vector pq. What is the vector pq? It's obviously q minus p. So let's substitute the values of Q and P and you do the basic uh, vector algebra calculation. We get the vector PQ. Now it is given that PQ or, or the distance PQ, that means length of the vector PQ, that means absolute value of PQ is equal to root 70. Now let's compute the modulus value or the absolute value of PQ, which is 1 plus 2s whole square, 6 plus 2s whole square and s square. Let's expand them and do the basic arithmetic calculation. We get a quadratic equation in S that is 9 square, 28 S and 37. Let's equate them as equal to root 17. So therefore, we get it as 9 square, 28 S, 37 is equal to 17. That means if we factorize, we get it as S equal to minus 10 by 9 and minus 2. So now, for S equal to minus 10 by 9, our position or the position vector Q will be calculated as 7 by 9 I, 7 by 9 J and 8 by 9 K. Whereas for S equal to minus 2, the position vector of the Q point or the Q vector will be equal to minus 1 I, minus 1 J and 0 K. So therefore, these are equivalent to a coordinate. 7 by 9, comma 7 by 9 and 8 by 9. That's why option D is correct. And for the second option is minus 1, minus 1, 0. That means option B is correct. And that's it. So this is the problem for J advance, which is very simple. And we solve it using vector algebra. Sometimes this problem also can be treated as a three-dimensional geometry problem as well. Hope you understood the problem. Thank you.